Hey everyone, I'm Richard and this, well this is it. Almost four years since the original Kickstarter for the first gen dev kit, this is the first consumer version of the Oculus Rift. Now, I have to admit that I wasn't too impressed with the original DK1. You could see the potential, but Oculus, in my opinion at least, had a mountain to climb in turning that initial product into a consumer-ready item that could really sell VR to the masses. Now, the good news is that they've done it. So, let's kick off by taking a look at the Oculus package. Opening up the box, we find the headset itself, the positional tracking camera, plus under the flap here, a standard Xbox One controller, plus the accompanying wireless receiver dongle. There's also the Oculus Remote, which is principally used for navigating the Oculus Home interface. Let's take a closer look at the headset here. It's a $600 product, but the plain plastics and fabric finish don't exactly scream free premium build quality, but it's light. It's very light, and that's of crucial importance in overall comfort. Peering inside the headset, those lenses are paired with 1080 by 1200 low persistence OLED screens, one per eye. On the bottom of the Rift, we find a small slider for adjusting interpupillary distance, while three Velcro fastenings are adjusted to fix the Rift comfortably into place. And finally, there are these two headphone mounts, which are detachable if you prefer to use your own kit. Well, I have to say that I found the audio quality from the bundled solution to be really impressive here. Personally speaking, I'll be sticking with these. Setting up the Rift is pretty straightforward. The Oculus Setup tool downloads everything you need and then guides you through the process of calibrating and configuring the headset. Your reward for completing the setup is your first taste of VR, a series of vignettes that actually look really impressive. Now, these are actually part of the Oculus Dream Deck app, and that's a series of cool VR demos that really showcase what this piece of hardware can do. You probably won't watch them more than once or twice, but they're so good that you'll want to share them with your friends just to show them what virtual reality is all about and what the Rift can do. After setup, you access everything you do in virtual reality using the Oculus Home app. What's this? Imagine a fully functional Steam style client in a full VR environment and you have some idea of how this works, and it's actually very, very cool. On top of that, there's actually a ton of really cool stuff to enjoy from Oculus Home, and a lot of it is free. In addition to the Dream Deck demos, there's a number of full real-time VR CG shorts, Pixar-style movies where you're actually on the stage, if you can see what I mean. There's also Oculus Video, allowing you to check out some 360-degree videos, or watch standard 2D movies within a virtual cinema, with a number of different selectable environments. You can even import your own videos and watch them. The only issue here being that resolution really isn't that great and the colour seems to be a bit washed out. But what about the games? Well, my concern going in is that we'd be tweaking settings, overclocking graphics cards and adjusting GPU control panels to get that locked 90 FPS that's so crucial for VR gaming. But the reality is that almost all of the games I tested, well, with a couple of exceptions, they all just worked. It all felt very console-like actually, plug and play. So this is Lucky's Tale, a really cute immersive Mario style platformer. In common with a lot of the more visually simple Rift titles, there are zero performance issue here. That frame rate is absolutely locked. It adds to the feeling of immersion here, which is simply immense. Imagine being in the middle of a Mario level, able to look around in all directions with seemingly no view distance limitations. Platforming takes on a new dimension when you can physically look around the environments, peering around corners if you like. Lucky's Tale is free with the Rift and it's great fun, do check it out. There are quite a few titles in the launch lineup that are effectively VR versions of existing game concepts. So take VR Tennis Online for example, it's very similar to Virtual Tennis, just played out on a massive play area. Not exactly a game changer, but it demonstrates that at the very least, the Rift is a really cool gaming display. And here I am playing The Vanishing of Ethan Carter in VR. If you've played this in its normal 2D incarnation, you'll know that it's a visually stunning title, especially in its Unreal Engine 4 upgraded form. In VR, the world here looks absolutely amazing. It's everything you've ever dreamed of in terms of how a first-person game would look in virtual reality. And the surprising thing here is that even the GTX 970 manages to hold 90 FPS here, but it does so with a cost. The resolution scale is set to 80% and the FXAA anti-aliasing looks a little poor. Upping the resolution scale and swapping in temporal TAA anti-aliasing 
can make a big difference, but the 970 doesn't really cope. So those with more powerful graphics hardware will get a big boost here. It's also fair to say that playing this game makes you feel rather ill after a very short while. Now, that's why Ethan Carter also has a comfort mode that fixes you on the spot. In this scenario, you navigate by selecting on-screen arrows that sort of instantly warp you about. It solves the nausea issue completely, but it does kill the amazing immersion this game offers. So now I know why each Oculus game gets a comfort rating. VR Tennis, well, that has a pretty static camera, so it gets a good, comfortable rating. You can play it for hours if you want with no issues. Lucky's Tail, well, that moves up to the moderate level. I played that for about 45 minutes before starting to feel a bit strange. Project Cars and Ethan Carter, on the other hand, those are rated intense. So yeah, about 10 to 15 minutes there, and I really had to take the headset off. Overall, I'd say that Oculus's rating system is actually bang on the money, and this is all useful information to have before you actually buy a game. Of course, the elephant in the room is how the Oculus Rift compares to the more expensive HTC Vive. Well, until we have the consumer version of the HTC kit available, a definitive view on that isn't really possible. But what's clear is that at the moment, Vive's games seem to be more about standing up and moving around the play space interacting with the VR world using VR controllers. Oculus, well, it's much more of a seated experience right now with games to match, but certainly right now in terms of the quality of the headset and the image quality, Oculus really is up there with the best. So it's preliminary verdict time. I'd say that if you've pre-ordered the Oculus Rift, you're gonna be delighted with your purchase. This really does take gaming into a new dimension to the point where even older game concepts feel fresh and new again. And I particularly like the effort that Oculus has put into demonstrating that VR is about more than just gaming. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how some of the content in that area pans out. And of course, there's more to come from Oculus with the upcoming launch of its own 3D controllers, which should open up much more of the VR games in development for Rift owners, which are currently Vive exclusives. So right now, I'd say it's too early to say which is better, Vive or Oculus. Certainly the quality of the Rift itself can't really be faulted, and the experience I had playing games on it was just excellent overall. Now, having played a bunch of Vive titles at the Steam VR developer conference, the question is to what extent the larger feature set of the HTC device really makes a difference compared to the Rift, and whether it can justify its higher price point. On that count, only time and a big bunch of games, of course, can tell. Anyway, that's all I've got for you right now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe to support what we do here at Digital Foundry. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.